Hi, I'm Dr. Rosemary Francis, Chief Scientist for HPC here at Altair, and I'm asked all the time, what is HPC? HPC stands for High Performance Computing. It's sometimes called supercomputing, high throughput computing or batch computing. And while many computers are in fact high performance, the HPC industry specifically refers to supercomputers used for scientific simulation. Most people have never seen a supercomputer, but they are so critical to all of our lives. They are used every day for weather forecast. They're used to design most of the products we have in our homes. They're used to design cars, aeroplanes, microchips. Oil and gas exploration is simulated using supercomputers prior to drilling into the ground. And we would not have COVID vaccines if it weren't for supercomputers. Supercomputers were used to process the information once the structure of the virus had been analysed. They're used for simulating drug interactions. Supercomputers are used for sequencing genomes. So many of the scientific advancements that we rely on today for modern medicine wouldn't be possible without supercomputers. Here is a selfie that I took at the UK headquarters. It's a machine that we use for simulating customer projects when designing uh, the wide range of products and services that our customers use our simulation tools for. These include aeroplanes, aeroplane seats, we do crash testing, all kinds of modeling to make sure that the devices and uh, transport that you use is effective, safe, efficient, and manufactured in the greenest way possible. And supercomputers can be huge. They can fill an entire room. But this is a picture of lots of smaller supercomputers. They can be uh, just a single rack. Um, racks, as you can see, look like great big black wardrobes. And in this room, there are lots of different machines used to test the latest and greatest supercomputing technology, different file systems, different operating systems, and different techniques for making sure that the simulation workloads run as fast as possible. At the other end of the scale, this is one of the largest supercomputers. This is a machine that I went to see at the uh, University of Texas at Austin. And this machine has got 6,400 compute nodes. Now, a compute node is really a, a separate computer. These are all joined together to form a supercomputer and work together efficiently. It's got over half a million CPU cores. So it's got the same computing power, really, as a, as a small town. Absolutely phenomenal amount of uh, calculations can be done on this machine. And so with this computer, you can form simulations and run scientific workloads that is just not possible without a machine of this size. So how does it all fit together? So as I mentioned before, a supercomputer is made of separate compute nodes. Each one is really a, a computer um, not really that different from your laptop or your mobile phone usually made with the latest and greatest technology. So it's usually got faster CPUs and more memory. And all of these are joined together with a super fast network and they're joined to a shared file system where they can all access the same data simultaneously. This way of sharing data is really critical for the supercomputer so that different computers, different compute nodes can access the same data and share data effectively as if they're all working together as one. And what makes that possible is a piece of software called the scheduler or workload manager. It's the scheduler that brings these machines together and makes them function as one. This means you can submit jobs or tasks or workloads to the supercomputer. You first send that workload to the scheduler and then the scheduler queues that workload and works out which machine it should actually run on. It's a bit like a really complicated jigsaw that changes over time. And we have three workload managers here at Altair. Um, Altair PBS Professional is particularly good for manufacturing and simulation workloads. Altair Grid Engine is particularly good for life sciences and medical workloads. 
An Alto accelerator is optimized for high throughput workloads, such as those that you might find in the semiconductor industry, where they run lots of very, very short tasks over and over again, rather than running longer tasks that, that take maybe hours, days, or even weeks to complete. So looking at how those jobs fit together on the supercomputer, you might have multiple jobs or tasks on a single node that is common in the semiconductor industry. Or you might have a single job that's broken down into smaller tasks and that job needs several computers to run. At NASA and at uh, publicly owned supercomputers, they run very, very big simulations uh, to simulate whole planets, stars. Um, there are some large simulations of our sun, and they might take the whole machine to simulate. Weather forecast typically uses a, an entire supercomputer in order to complete uh, an uh, a day's cycle. Other jobs might be a bit smaller. They might only use five or 10 machines, but that still can be a large number of tasks working together to complete an operation. And how do you interact with these machines? Well, um, they all run Linux, so uh, mostly you submit workloads by typing on the command line and, and um, putting in the special instructions needed to tell the scheduler what to run and how to run your workload. That can be complicated, though, and it, it can it can can require learning uh, a lot about the supercomputer. And so we've made that simple here at Altair with a product called Altair Access, which means you can submit your job using templates from your laptop, from your mobile phone, and view the results of that simulation directly through the desktop application or through your browser. So using a supercomputer doesn't always require a PhD in computer science. It's something that is really very accessible and hugely powerful tool to, to get the answers that you need. Increasingly, as machine learning and AI start taking over our lives, the areas of supercomputing are just absolutely exploding. Um, more and more of our lives are going to be designed on these amazing machines. Thank you for listening.